Campo Santa Maria Formosa is one of the largest squares in Venice and among the busiest. Only Piazza San Marco is much larger. In other videos, we have examined the social functioning of neighborhood squares used mostly by locals. Campo Santa Maria Formosa serves a larger public. The shape of the square is quite irregular, a characteristic of medieval squares generally. The presence of a church in nearly all Venetian squares strongly affects their arrangement. Here, the church is set right into the square and occupies the most prominent position. It is hard to say precisely where the square begins and ends. The church's main facade faces a small offshoot of the square to the west that some might call another square. Most squares laid out since about 1600 are simple rectangles or squares. You can see all of the square from anywhere in it. Medieval squares often have views interrupted by buildings. This complexity of shape affects the use of the square, which has its retail section, its cafes, its corner for old folks, quiet areas sometimes taken over by children, and the bustling throat of the square next to the Campanile, where most of the foot traffic passes through a narrow opening. Formal rectangular squares do not so easily allow these separations of function, and activities may intrude upon one another. This overview of Campo Santa Maria Formosa gives an idea of its size and scale. Excepting the church, most buildings are of moderate size and not more than four stories tall. One of the most difficult challenges in the design of a square is the relationship of its size to the number of people using it. While this square feels roomy today, back when it was designed there were probably more people using it. The best squares have many entrances, as this turns the square into a pedestrian intersection and brings more people into the square. This square has seven principal entrances. Some are quiet, but most see a steady stream of people passing throughout the day. The large church has slight effect on the square's function as only a few people use the church during most of the day. Like many churches in Venice, it is rather plain on the side that faces the square. There are many fine buildings facing the square, but something is missing. It took me years to realize what it is. There is not a single tree or any other greenery. Consider Campo San Giacomo dell'Orio, where most of the buildings are quite plain. However, the trees soften its appearance. That makes it comfortable and provides summer shade. The northern part of the square has few destinations and only one busy entrance, so this end of the square is often almost empty. Children use it as a playground because Venice has very few formal playgrounds. Most squares serve this function. The absence of the usual playground furnishings doesn't seem to matter much. Most squares in Venice lack benches. If you want to sit, you normally pick a cafe, have a seat, and order something. There are two benches at the southern end. The two wellheads are used as tables and places to lean or sit. The news kiosk near the Campanile is the only other permanent structure within the square, although the cafe tables and tents to the east have been there for years. The square is used by a mix of locals and tourists. It has none of the flash and glitz of Piazza San Marco. No one will approach you with a fake Gucci handbag or a disposable toy. Prices in the cafes are a fraction of what they charge in the piazza, just a few hundred yards away. Piazza San Marco is certainly magic in its own way, but Campo Santa Maria Formosa is sometimes a more agreeable place to visit. Countless casual encounters between residents occur in the course of a day, and that is arguably the most important function of the square. It nourishes neighborhood social ties and is probably the chief source of news and gossip for the residents. Children can ride bikes and scooters here and they already know to respect other people. Today's playtime appears to be a regularly organized affair, but often children simply gather to play. Old folks sit on the two benches during the warmer part of the day. There are three cafes, a large one to the east, a small one to the west, and a third between these two. Only the tourists routinely order full meals, but the locals drop in for an espresso or a glass of wine and a small sandwich. The commercial area for this neighborhood is the Salizada San Leo, a street just a short walk west of the Campo. 
and this explains the relative lack of market stalls in the square itself. There is the greengrocer, a news agent, and one or two transient stalls selling cheap clothing or used household goods. Retailing thus plays a minor role in the life of the square. The canal to the west of the square is a busy one, and much of the freight in this neighborhood passes through here. During the day, small freighters dock here, and the porters stay busy with hand trucks, delivering goods and hauling away trash. In sum, the square is central to the social life of the neighborhood. Nearly everybody passes through every day. The square helps to sustain the close social ties that have characterized Venetian life for a thousand years. Part of its success, of course, owes to the complete absence of cars in the square. It is true that the power boats are a minor intrusion, but they, at least, are confined to the canals. Few car-free areas in other cities are entirely free of vehicular traffic, and the residual traffic harms them. It is for this reason that I advocate dedicated freight delivery systems that remove freight traffic, except for hand carts and freight bikes, entirely from the streets. The compromise case of allowing truck traffic during a few hours in the morning is certainly a huge improvement over the car and truck dominated status quo. And this can be achieved in nearly any urban area that wants to make the change. This measure achieves most of the benefits that Venice enjoys and it costs little, as is being demonstrated in New York's Times Square, where stretches of Broadway were blocked off. This practice should be implemented in all cities as part of our response to the climate change emergency. If we want to improve our cities, there is no better, cheaper, or handier way than simply to push out the cars and recreate social spaces for ourselves, our neighbors, and visitors to our fair city.